The newly released declassified U.S. intelligence report on the origins of COVID-19 has no credibility and is unscientific, according to Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin, who said this in a statement on Sunday. The 17-page report, which was released this past Friday by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, confirmed that intelligence agencies have not reached a conclusion on the origins of the virus, though it offered some new insights into the investigation. The report said that it was plausible the virus originated at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, but that researchers at the lab were probably unaware of its existence and any leak was accidental. However, they did not completely rule out the possibility of it being deliberately genetically engineered, though they believe that scenario is less likely. Nor did they rule out the possibility of it being caused by natural means. The report notes that identifying the origins of COVID-19 will require Beijing's cooperation, noting that scientists outside China lack the technical data to fill in important gaps. Now, last month, the World Health Organization established a new scientific advisory group on pandemic origins and called on China to supply the raw data to help any new investigation. However, China has declined, citing patient privacy rules. Report sounds uh, correct to me. <laughs> like we should be looking at this lab, and no one is saying they did it on purpose because that would be really crazy and resulted in like tons of their own people dying. But like, for the report to say that is interesting. Yeah, it's like wait, we didn't ask that. Wait, yeah, wait, you you think it's plausible enough that they may have done this deliberately? That you had to put in that you don't have evidence that they did it deliberately, or is that because these are diplomatic documents as much as they are? You know, pro, you know, productions of an investigation. They're, well, they're trying not to hurt China's feelings, which is impossible because the Chinese government is hurt by any you know remote insinuation that anyone Chinese anywhere on in the history of the world has ever done anything wrong. But right. So the the question of did they do it deliberately? It's like whoa, hold on a second. Because <laughs> the other part, the, you know, if if it leaked out of the lab, it was accidental. Like that. That's always been. My assumption, yeah, mine as well, is that you're doing reckless work, <laughs> right? Uh, potentially funded by the NIH, and when you're, if you do, if if around the world you do enough reckless work, statistically, somebody's going to get infected. Other lab leaks from Soviet lab leaks—they've been accidents. The accident right, on a lab leak is a recurring thing that has caused disease and death throughout history, throughout the last our last century of awareness of this kind of right, problem. It, and it's why in 2012. When uh, Anthony Fauci wrote his uh, ar wrote an article for a, a medical journal about the cost and the benefit of gain of function research, he said, "Look, people are right to worry about lab leaks. People are right to worry about the risks. The risks are very real." He sa he says, "I particularly believe that the benefits outweigh the risks, right. but because we, we it would be so cool, and look what <laughs> we can do." <laughs> I mean, yeah, the the benefits. Uh, of that type of research, weighed against the risks, would have to be so extraordinary. Right. I'm not seeing like, what the benefits are at all, frankly. I mean, no one has really made right. a good case for, here's what we learned from having done this research right. we that have makes this us vaccine, so much right. right. We have this vaccine. These we vaccines have, have nothing to do. The vaccines right. we have have nothing to do with this kind of research. Uh, they, we have, they haven't shown some great new technical experts. I mean, they, they know how to make really impressive diseases that would kill people. Um, right. So what are they talking about? It's funny when they talk about that, because we don't see what it is. So then are they talking about like some kind of military or weapons uh, sort of tech? Like, we, we could kill a lot of people. With this, with this uh, technology, well, okay. Exactly. Well, that, if that's the benefit to doing this research, please stop. Right. That's certainly one implication of it. Yeah. I mean, but we would have no control never, over right. it because it's so like you can't just target one country with a disease. Right. Like it's like dropping a bomb that just keeps exploding. Right. All around the world. Right. Maybe that's not a good bomb to drop. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not. So we have new Hill Harris X data on what voters think about the origins of COVID nineteen. Let's take a look. The poll, which was conducted before the release of the U.S. intelligence report, found 48% of voters said that the virus was created in a lab in Wuhan, China. That includes 69% of Republicans, 34% of Democrats, and 43% of independents. These findings track with a June Hill-Harris X survey with similar findings. 
Now, I think that that Democratic number would be much higher if Dem if Democratic voters and viewers had better access to information. Like the Democrats, you know, Democrats, independents, Republicans are all living in different media ecosystem bubbles. And so Republicans are living in a bubble where they're shared mm -hmm. a lot of information ab about what we know now about the lab leak. I think a lot of Democrats are still in the kind of like mid 2020 era where the lab leak has been debunked. Yeah. And it's just not something that serious people talk about. And I bet if, if somehow you could get information to them, and so if your friends and family <laughs> are among that, in that bubble, send them this video. Um, and, it, and it's, it's. We're not it, this video because we're not even like talking about the evidence because we've been talking about the right. evidence for so long. And in some sense, it's, it's harmless. If it, you don't, it, it doesn't mean Trump is good right, if you accept okay. this. It has right. nothing, it has no. Uh, doesn't mean China bad, doesn't mean war no, with China. It doesn't mean Chinese people bad. Right. If anything, it's the other way because this one is the government's fault if they right. did it rather than unique to some very like Asian cultural practices with, with the animals right, they the eat. Right, the bat soup or whatever right. they were trying to blame it on. Right, that's more, that, or that, would, that supports a more racially charged narrative than right. this coming out of a lab. Right, yes, and the, the fact that that's what they went to immediately, it was kind of racist. Yeah. It's like, oh, people will believe this. Yeah. Those, those crazy hillbilly Chinese out way out in Wuhan, you know, they love to eat the bat soup. Wuhan is like tw a city of, a very sophisticated city of 20 plus million Gigantic city. People. Yeah. <laughs> right. Would, would, would be the biggest city in the United States. Right. If it were, if it were, in, if it were in the United States. Uh, but, you know, our, our elites figured that the Amer American people would be quick to believe that yeah, it was just some bat soup. You know, you know how those Chinese people are. When, right, in fact, if, if it was actually an accident from, uh, you know, uh, f from research that may or may not have been funded by the U.S. By the U.S. <laughs> that, then, you know, that is not playing off of uh, right. racial stereotypes. Right. So. And, we, and whatever the truth is, we will deal with what the truth is. But th this, is, this is a plausible theory that people need to take more seriously. Yeah, for sure. And we'll have more rising right after this.